welcome to a web of stories. My name is Melinda um, and welcome to Boring Corner. It is the first full day of summer for my family and myself obviously because yesterday was my kids last day of school. Um, this has posed some problems. Oh first this is this is the, my weekly reading vlog I should say that. I will get to the actual reading vlog part but I want to do a few little disclaimers first. <sighs> Because it is summer, I totally didn't even put this together in my mind. Uh, my kids are home, so it's noisy. I did send my my son upstairs for a little bit while I filmed this, um, but my husband's gonna come down and like finish making his breakfast, even though it's after 11 a.m. <laughs> um, so there'll be noises, I'm sorry. I had planned to do this outside. I had a great plan to put this outside because it's a beautiful day. And I remembered it's garbage morning, so outside's not gonna work. And I wanna get this done earlier in the day because by the time I edit it and upload it, it takes a while. And I do want it out today. Um, so anyway, this is my weekly reading vlog. As usual, we will do the vlog part and then I'll come back and do kind of like a little vlog today and then go over my reading for the week. So let's get started. Okay, it's Friday, June 9th. I'm out here in the rain. I just wanted to show you my little things I have sprouts in my lettuce which is surprising me because my son didn't put enough dirt in that I didn't think that would happen these radishes these are purple plum radishes they're doing well I'm getting a little bit on my spinach coming up and this you can barely tell I think this is also spinach <laughs> we'll see um, nothing on the, the green onion this is radish surprise it's just the seeds I had left over so we'll see what we get out of that this is more green onions, something's happening. These back here are carrots, and over here, look! My first little tiny, teensy tiny carrots popping up! And more radishes. We're not really a huge radish family, I just, you know, needed a win. So, oh, and then over here, nothing's gonna happen here, but <sighs> these are all my potatoes. Um, the stuff on top is just grass clippings I'm using as mulch. But I just planted those, so I'm not expecting anything. And then, Oh, hey, it's reviving. This is my little grocery store uh, basil that I bought. <laughs> Let's see if I can make it live. It's, it's kind of sort of living. And then over here, we have two things of catnip. Again, my son didn't put enough dirt in that one, so I planted another one, but still nothing coming up with the catnip. That's okay. I don't really care that much about catnip. He just thought that was cool. Anyway, that's my yard. And this is the basketball hoop my kids don't use, but we don't know what to do with it yet, so there you go hello it is sunday june 11th um i'm out here in my front porch again um my kids are out making a lot of noise in the backyard and the boring corner is boring and i want to do a quick video i just finished um the girls on chalk hill and i i kid you not i like could not put that down for the last 30 percent uh, it was a a really good suspenseful book i had a couple issues with it nothing nothing huge but it's definitely a good book um it's a net galley review, so the book is not published in the U.S. yet. Although apparently the sequel's already out in the U.K., so I might do some Blackwell shopping. <laughs> but um, I'm going to do my Goodreads review, which will be up soon, probably tonight. Um, so if you really want to know what I thought of it right away, you can always look at my Goodreads account by the time you see this video. Um, I will do a video review of it, but I'm not going to release it till it's publication day, which is later in June. So you will hear on this channel what I thought of it. You just have to wait a few weeks. So anyway, other than that, it's a beautiful day here. Um, we're heading into the last week of school for the kids. And uh, yeah, that's what's going on in my world. Sad and stuff. Good morning. I have my, my mug like Sue because today I'm starting another big book. I'm gonna start the Lincoln Highway today. Oh, by the way, it's uh, Monday, June 12th. I actually um, had an, ax I call my accidental big books where I read them and I don't realize until I'm done that they're big books. Um, I finished The Girls on Chalk Hill uh, yesterday and when I went, to, it's uh, uh, eARC. So when I went to enter it into my um, spreadsheet, I saw it was over 400 pages. So another big book for me. Um, I will be doing a lot of recording today. So you're going to see this shirt, but I'm going to try to like spread out like the video. So it doesn't look like I'm just doing a bunch of videos in a row. Uh, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, this is the last week of school for my kids. Actually the last like half week because they have regular hours of school, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. 
And then Thursday, they have half day. Uh, I'm going to go walk with my son to school um, in the morning um, because he has like a little promotion. And then um, after that, his class is going to go. There's a bowling alley not far away. So they're going to go have a party. Um, and then that afternoon, my daughter has like a drive through promotion where you just go to the middle school and you drive through and you can get out and take pictures. And they have like a Kona Ice food truck there. Um, so we'll be doing that. And then it's like summer. I can't believe I, this is a, this is a hard one. I think I said this in an earlier vlog. This is a hard one because, um, it's the only year where both of my kids are promoting to like another phase of school. Um, they're two years apart in school. So sorry, I keep like banging something while I talk. <laughs> um, they're two years apart in school. So this year, um, in our school district, middle school is seventh and eighth grade. So my son is going into middle school and then my daughter is going into high school, which I cannot believe because she's still just a baby, right? She's she's still a baby. <laughs> but she's like, mom, can you quit being so like weird about that? <laughs> I said, no, because I'm a mom. Uh, wait till you go to college. You think this is weird? Wait till you go to college. <laughs> anyway, so it's, it's kind of like a big emotional week for us emotional for me because I'm someone who cries really easily so I'll probably like cry at these little promotion things but whatever I'm gonna try something I don't know if this is gonna take off um but I was thinking about this um yesterday I was uh responding to some comments uh to Randy the literate Texan um and it was it was a reply on my uh root and toot and June on the range tag is that that part's not really important, but in this tag, I told him a story that I, I realized I probably should have just told the story everywhere. And if you want, you can go find it and, and get a sneak peek because I'm not going to tell the story right here. I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do. Um, but it's one of those stories where like what you're reading is like reflected back to you in real life. And um, I'm not sure what to, I think I'm going to call it the slice of bookish life story, slice of bookish life. We're going to make that a hashtag. Um, but on Monday, I am going to post a video wearing this same shirt because I'm going to tell it right after I'm going to film it right after I film this, um, telling the story of when, what I was reading, like reflected back to me in outside of, you know, in real life. This has actually happened twice to me in my life. Um, unfortunately, one time was just horrific, not personally horrific, just generally horrific. Um, Ooh, really, it was, I'm not going to tell the story because it was that bad, but I will tell you that the book I was reading at the time was The Lovely Bones. So again, not a personal story, just something that was happening. It was a generally horrific, but yeah, that's a horrific book. So, but the story I'm going to tell is actually very sweet and kind of cool. <laughs> um, Randy already knows the story and anyone who's peeked ahead to my comments on that tag, which I am not going to put a card up because you're going to have to work for it. <laughs> Um, anyone who's peeked at the, peeked at the, um, tag in the comments on it will have seen the story, but it's actually pretty cool. Um, so anyway, yeah, I have to do, I'm going to do that video. I'm going to do, redo my video review for Where the Lost Wander because the file was corrupted or something. I can't get it open. Um, and I'm going to do the Girls on Chalk Hill review, which you will not see until later this month because it's going to be like the day it releases is when I'm going to put it up. Um, and then I might, if I get organized and actually get this up, I'll do a little run through of like my summer reading program for my kids. Um, the method I use is bribery. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to, I'll run through all that if I get that up today, if not, and I'm not sure when I'll put that up. So we'll see. I'm trying not to like schedule a video. So I have like six videos in a week and then nothing for the next week. So I'm trying to space things out anyway. Um, I'm going to log off this vlog now. Oh, the other book I finished before I log off. The other book I finished was One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, um, which I enjoyed. Um, I still have to watch the movie. I'm not going to do a video review of it exactly. Um, I will, I'm going to do a vlog where I do a little short review, kind of what I thought of it and the movie when I watched the movie. Um, I was going to watch it yesterday, but the kids started watching The Simpsons and it just didn't happen. Um... And then a vlog for when we go down to the museum down in Salem and show all that. And I'm not sure when that's going to be because um, just schedule wise when we're going to have time to do it. But that is coming. So I won't be doing a, a review for that. But at some point you will see all that together.
Now, I'm cutting this short. I have other videos to do and I don't want this vlog to be like an hour long on Friday when I publish it. So I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Good morning. I am not coming. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Froggy in my throat. I am not coming from Boring Corner. I am coming from my car. As you can see, face made up, hair a mess. I'm getting my hair done today. Anywho, uh, quick, because I just have a chance, I thought I would do a quick vlog. I'm waiting for my hairdresser to text to say she's ready for me. Um, so I am hoping today to do a video on the summer reading program I do for my kids or I'm going to do for my kids. Um, not sure if that's going to happen. I still have to get things hung up and everything. So if you, if you've seen it by the time you see this vlog, that means I got it ready. If not, you'll see it this coming week. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, reading wise, I am reading a book from NetGalley that is challenging me, challenging me and that I'm really having trouble getting into it. But I also want to be able to finish it and review it because I have a kind of I have a lot of books waiting to review, which means that my review per my review rev review percentage is low. So I want to get it higher. So I want to be sure that I read it and review it, but I'm having a lot of trouble getting into it, which is kind of a pain. Um, and it's by an author I've read before and haven't had a problem with. So I'm not sure what the issue with that is, but I'm not going to talk about it now because I'm still early in it. Like it's not an especially long book and two days of reading, I'm at 8%. So yeah. Um, <laughs> but we'll see how that goes. And then, um, yeah, today is my, I, I want to say it's my kid's last full day of school, but it's not even that because my son has early release and my daughter had late start. Yesterday was their last full day of school. Tomorrow they have a half day though. Um, so I will go to school with my son cause I do a promotion in the morning and I can't believe he's going into middle school. And then my daughter has like a drive through promotion in the afternoon, um, because she's going to high school. Oh. But um, she says she doesn't want to go because it's not, well, staff members at her school told her it's a mess. So she doesn't want to go. So I don't know if we're going to go to that or not. Um, I told her it's her decision. We'll see. Um, right now she's saying she doesn't want to go, but that may change. Well, I don't know. Anyhow, the, uh, my hairdresser should be texting any moment. So I will stop this and maybe after, like if my hair looks, if she does it in a way, cause as I said, she's great. She does a great haircut, great color, but um, sometimes like that post when she just dries your hair just enough to get you out the door, sometimes it isn't the way I would normally do it. So we'll see how it turns out. Anyway, talk to y'all later. It's the last walk to elementary school. Of course the middle school's right next to the elementary school. So it's not the last time he'll make this walk, but the last walk to, el to elementary school. Good morning. Yeah. This way. Creating is my happy place. My coffee isn't very hot right now. It is Thursday, June 15th. We are, well, in about an hour it'll be summer for us because both kids will be done with school. Um, I went to my son's promotion at school. I refuse to believe I was the only mother crying. Just saying. I'm sure there were other mothers crying too. But it was short and sweet and I came home, took a shower, my husband went to work. So now I've got like the last few hours of quiet alone time for the next three months. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to catch up on YouTube video or booktube videos. And uh, yeah, my kids have the orthodontist today. So I will get some reading time in at the orthodontist office. That's like a good thing about kid appointments is you bring a book. Other than that, now and tonight we're going to like a little diner that they like for dinner. We Usually we do lunch out on the last day of school, but mean mother, you know, scheduled the orthodontist. So we're going out for dinner instead. Anyway, just to check in, I'll see how this, see how this week goes. But, uh, I was very happy to turn off my weekday alarm this morning. So that's always a good thing. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Okay. Welcome back. As I said, we are in summer, and which means my kids are home and all that. Yesterday, we um, went to, as you saw in there, we went, my husband and I went to my son's little promotion at his school, and I cried. It's just, my son's like, why are you crying? I said, I refuse to admit I'm the only mom who was crying. I know there must have been another mom there crying for a sixth grade promotion. I did not cry at my daughter's eighth grade promotion because she refused to go. <laughs> it's a drive through promotion, and she said that, like, the librarian at the school told them that it's always a mess. So she just decided she didn't want to go. And I was like, okay. I mean, I, I don't want her to miss experiences, but this is her choice. I'm not going to force her into it. So 
and there you go. Um, that afternoon, though, and then I took the kids to the orthodontist because I'm a mean mom and I made them go to orthodontist the last day of school. And then um, my son had his coating. When she was done that, we went to one of our favorite places. It's a little diner for dinner that the kids chose. But they have talked me into like a first day of summer ice cream. So this afternoon, um, we're going to go to, we're going to go to Powell's. <laughs> And then we're gonna go back to Salt and Straw so we can get like the, like the best ice cream in the world. So that's kind of what's going on in my world. So let me talk about this week's reading. Um, I actually like this morning thought I don't think I finished. I, I finished something last night, and I will get to that. But I thought I'm glad I finished something because I don't think I finished anything else this week. And then I looked at my spreadsheet. <laughs> that's the fourth book I finished this week. So let me go through um, what I have done. So the first book I finished is Clark and Division by Naomi Hirahara. So this was an audio reread for me because my book club um, discussed it last last Saturday night. And um, my initial grade, which I'm keeping for this book, is, a, is an A+. I really love this book. The rest of my book club didn't love it as much as I do, but I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I will say, though, I did not enjoy the narration on the audiobook. So if you have not read uh, Clark and Division by Naomi Hirahara, I recommend it, but I don't recommend the audiobook. I don't know. It's just something with the, the narrator just didn't seem to, didn't fit what I thought she should sound like. Um, I'm sure she's probably a great narrator for other things. Just for this one, it didn't work for me. <sighs> so I won't go too much into that one. The next one I also won't talk too much about because on the 26th, I have a video review of it. And that is The Girls on Chalk Hill by Alison Belsham. I did give this an A. Um... This is kind of like a fun thriller, you know, suspense thing. And I really enjoyed it. Um, there were a couple things that kind of like meant mm. one of which, which I'm not sure is, is really a thing, which I kind of discussed in that video, if I remember correctly. But anyway, um, I actually really liked it. And little confession, though. So the sequel's coming out. But the only place I could find the sequel, and I looked everywhere. I looked on Bookshop. I looked at Powell's. I looked at um, Blackwell's couldn't find it. The only place that had it was, was Amazon. So I had to, to pre-order and they only had it on Kindle. So, um, I did have to pre-order that cause I do really want to read the next book in the series. <laughs> I think it's called the girl's last cry. I think that's what it is. It's coming out later this summer. So then the next book, which I'm also not going to talk too much about <laughs> because I'm going to do something else with that is one flew over the cuckoo's nest by Ken Casey. So, um, my plan for this is I'm going to do like a little, like not a reading vlog because I've already read the book, but I'm going to do like a little vlog um, kind of with my thoughts of the book. And then I'm going to watch the movie and I'll have my thoughts on the movie. And then I'm going to do like a little travel vlog because my family and I will go down to Salem, which is my hometown. And it's also where this book takes place. Um, it's about an hour south of here. And we're going to go um, at the, the state hospital there where One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is based and where the movie was filmed. They now have um, a museum. So we're going to go to the museum and part of that museum is dedicated to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Actually, a woman um, from my the church I grew up in started that museum. So we're going to go do that. And I'm going to do that kind of all as sort of a vloggish thing at some point. I'm not sure when. It may not be until July that happens. Only because we have to find a time. Whenever we go to Salem, we have to um, include that with a family visit. <laughs> so there's other schedules that have to be worked in together. So hopefully soon will be doing that. Okay, and the book I finished last night, which I will talk a little bit more about, <laughs> is The Dark Angel, which is the 10th Ruth Galloway book by Ellie Griffiths. So I gave this one a B plus, which for that series or for a mystery series like this is actually a really good grade. Um, and this book, Ruth, it's it's like Ruth Goes to Italy. She's It's not set in Norfolk, England, which is where one of the books they went to Blackpool, but otherwise all the books are kind of set in this one area, which is I mean, I really enjoy that because Ruth Galloway writes that area really well. I really want to go to this area. Um, so when I first realized, I didn't know anything about this book, picking it up. I kind of do that with the Ruth Galloway books. I just pick them up because I already know the series. I don't read the synopsis or anything. So I was surprised all of a sudden we're in Italy. Um, and But she did that really well. And then Nelson, who's like the other kind of main character in the series, also ends up as does ends up in Italy, as does Cathbad, in a way that probably shouldn't work, but it does. Um, I won't say too much about 
the mystery. There's actually two sort of storylines going. There's the Italy storyline and there's a Norfolk storyline. And the Norfolk storyline is pretty much more kind of in the line of the overarching kind of a little bit soapy uh, plot that goes on. Um, I actually thought the Norfolk one was a little more interesting, mostly because it helped push along that sort of overarching storyline. Not that the Italy storyline was not interesting. It's just, um, you know, I like when Ruth uh, talks about like Romans in England and Romans in Italy um, is, I mean, it's it's not as special or as unique, um, but the story was still really good. We did get Cathbad, not as much Cathbad as I would like. If you've read the series, you know Cathbad is the best. Um, and I, I would, you know, Ellie Griffiths has says she has ended the Ruth Galloway series with the 15th book, which just came out for now. She's not closed the door and, and, and revisiting Ruth. I would love for her to do a Cathbad series because Cathbad is just so awesome. But anyway, um, I enjoyed it. It was like my little present reading to myself. I was like, yes. And this week I had um, a hair appointment on Wednesday and then the kids orthodontist appointment. So I had like extra time during, usually I read that book at night, but I had extra time during the day to read it. So it was kind of a little treat for myself for a very hectic week. And I enjoyed that. So um, I recommend the Ruth Galloway series. I would not, I, I do think you need to start this with book. You do, you do need to start Ruth Galloway with book one, but it's worth it. They're all good. Okay, so what am I reading now? Well, the first book I have going is this honker, The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls. Um, I'll be honest, when I first heard about this book, I was not as interested in it. Um, I have, the only Amor Tolls I had read was, um, or Amor Tolls, however, was Gentleman in Moscow, which I really liked. But just the this, this plot that I had heard, like high level elevator pitch of this book of like boys on a road trip, like did not seem interesting to me. Um, but it's Big Book Summer and I had it and a lot of people raved about it, but I didn't have a lot of details about it. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just read it for this. And then it came to my attention that this book is told over 10 days and it starts on June 12th. And each day is, is about in the book takes up about the same number of pages, which makes this really easy to read it like with the date. My husband, I think, just came down to make breakfast. If you hear noise, that's what's going on. <laughs> oh, that was my son. Someone came down to make breakfast. Anyway, <laughs> the book has always told over 10 days with each day being about the same amount of pages of real estate in the book. So it's really good to kind of read it with the correct day as you go along, which is what I've been doing. And I am loving this book. Um, I, I'm enjoying it a lot more than, and I did really enjoy Gentleman in Moscow, uh, but I'm enjoying this one even more. Um, I do have Rules of Civility on my shelf, which I have not read, which I probably will be reading after this. Um, because apparently I really like Immortals, but highly recommend this one so far. It's, it's a lot of fun. The next book I'm reading, which I did talk about last week, and it's, I'll probably talk about next week because I'm just reading a little bit a day, is The Pioneers, the heroic story of the settlers who brought the American ideal West. In case you didn't see it, my spiel on this was this was completely like I caught like the spine of it at the library and picked it up thinking it would be great for... June on the Range, um, only to find out later that it's it's not really right for June on the Range because it's about the settling of Ohio. And we're talking the Washington Adams and Jefferson's presidency. So that's a little too early for me to feel okay saying it's part of June on the Range. Um, whatever. I'm enjoying it. I'm reading just a little bit a day. And uh, yeah, it's it's fun. It's McCullough. So you know, it's it's good. It's written. I wouldn't say it's as narrative as say, um, Candace Millard or Eric Larson. It's not as narrative as that, but it's still pretty interesting. And I think that if you do take it slowly, it's not going to feel overly academic or, or, or overwhelm you. There is a section where, of course, Aaron Burr is the villain, which of course we all expect Aaron Burr to be the villain. Is it just me? Or do you think that like Lin-Manuel Miranda was like too easy on Aaron Burr and Hamilton? I don't know. I was thinking about that. Oh, I have one more print book and that is The Lost Journals of Sacagawea. Again, this was also um, an impulse buy, but this one is, I am counting towards June on the Range because it's Sacagawea. Like you wouldn't have an American West without her. Um, as I said last week, 
Jessica Hawea is such an important figure in American history and she we don't know anything about her. So I really love this reimagining of her, of her life. Um, I will say it is a little more difficult to read than I expected because the author is is native and they're a member of the Bitterroot Salish, which is I I don't think that they're part of the Shoshone tribe, which is what which is what Sakahawea was. She was Shoshone. Um, but I believe they're pretty close to them. Um, so she is familiar with the language of the Shoshone and the patterns of language and sort of the rhythm of the language. And the book is very much written like that. Um, and you can tell that that um, Erling, it's Deborah Magpie Erling who wrote it. You can tell she knows what she's talking about because it doesn't sound like a 1940s Western. <laughs> but it, it is like, it, you have to read it a little slower. I don't mind that. It's just, that's the way it is. So I'm just kind of doing a little bit a day of it, but I am really enjoying this one. It's just not going to take me. It's not very long. It's it's going to take me longer than I thought to read it. That's ah, okay. I don't care. Um, but I'm enjoying it. So this is the journals. This is a new release, by the way. I believe it just came out. It does, it's it, 2023. I don't have the date exactly of it, but it's it's new. But I would recommend picking this one up if you find it. Okay, my eBooks. So um, I will say I currently have one, two, three, four, five. I have six books going, which sounds like a lot, and it is. Um, but I actually am going to be starting some other books. I'm just not entirely sure what they all are yet. So I'm just going to tell you what I'm currently reading. So my eBooks, I have two, e three, I have three eBooks going. <laughs> the first one is The Mad Women of Paris by Jennifer Cody Epstein. So this is a NetGalley book for me. Um, I'm not going to lie. I've been having some trouble. I had some trouble with this one getting started with it. Just it, it wasn't grabbing me. It is... Uh, about uh, mental health treatment in France and Paris, obviously, um, in the 19th century, um, which sounds really interesting. It's by Jennifer Cody Epstein, who is an author that I have read and have has worked for me in the past. So I don't know what my problem was with this book, but it just wasn't grabbing me. Um, and I was like, because it's a NetGalley book, I want to finish it because I have like a 37% like rating on NetGalley right now because I have a lot of books and they're coming up. So I'm not behind on stuff, but I have a lot of books that I have to review and I don't want to not review this. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, what do I need to do? Um, I realized that a chapter takes about half an hour and this book isn't actually coming out till July. So I have some time. Um, so I'm just reading a chapter a day of it and that seems to be working. I had better time with it last night when I was reading. I'm starting to get a little more into it. Um, but I'm not going to say anything much about it now because I think I'm at like 12% after reading it for five days. And it's not that long. It's not like super long. Anyway, <laughs> Mad Women of Paris. It may turn out that I love this book, but we'll see. It's just a really rough start for me. And then on the serial wrap, I am reading 12 Years a Slave by Samuel Northup. This book is good. I just need to remember to read it because <laughs> it's not, I'm reading it on my phone. So I don't have the visual reminder of one of my e-readers and I forget about it. <laughs> But uh, no, I am enjoying it. Um, I'm hoping to have it done in like the next two weeks. Um, I'm trying to read it. So all of my issues have been have been my have been delivered to me now. And I think I'm at like 42%. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to read two issues a day and I should be caught up in like a little over a week. So um, there's really no reason. It's very readable. It's very interesting. Um, I highly recommend it. I just need to remember that I have it. <laughs> So I read it. And then finally, I have Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which I'm kind of still chipping away on. I'm still enjoying. Um, my reward to myself when I finish this is somewhere, somewhere the series has to be streaming. So I'm going to watch the series once I finish it. So we'll see. Anyway, oh, that's what I have going on this week. So books I may be starting. I have a book whose title... And I can't look it up because it's on Libby and I'm filming on my phone. So I can't look it up, but it is T. Kingfisher, the first book. Um, Books and Bow talked about it and I'm, I'm, I'm crediting her with the um, Willow at Books and Bow, crediting her with the recommendation of it. But I like T. Kingfisher's A House with Good Bones. So I'm going to give this one a try. Um, yeah. So yes, I'm going to read the horror novel as my bedtime book. So that, that should go swimmingly. Um, and then I still need to read this. This actually has four stories in it. So this is Wash Day Diaries. And I think what I might do is just do like, um, oh, I've been looking for this bookmark too. Um, <laughs> this is my my 
library book club bookmark and it has the dates on it and I wasn't sure about one of the dates um which is good because I think I had the July meeting a week earlier than it is so I have extra week there um anyway squirrel um anyway Greg it's supposedly fun had talked about this so I picked it up and there's four stories in it and I, th I think there's four stories in it um is there oh nope one two there's there's five there's five stories in it so I think I'm just going to read one a day it's it's a graphic novel. It should not take me that long. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. This is a little something different in it. So yeah, so that is what's going on. Um, I will be starting the next vlog with later this afternoon because I said Powell's and Salt and Straw. My children might be spoiled with Salt and Straw. The fact that it's so close to Powell's may be an issue for both the waistline and the pocketbook. Who will see? <laughs> anyway, oh, another thing I wanted to say that... Um, I watch a lot of booktubers around the world, and I know I have people who watch my videos from around the world. Um, for those of you in the in Europe, I know it's not just the UK and Europe. I hope that you guys are staying cool. Um, I have seen a lot of like really like crappy behavior by Americans um, about like <laughs> yeah it's hot, deal with it kind of thing. And I'm sorry I, on behalf of my my fellow country people, um, I'm sorry because that's really bad behavior. Um, I do hope that you are staying cool and safe and these things, uh, this sort of inclement weather is just gonna get worse. Um, so do what you need to, to stay cool and safe and take care of yourself. And also I just heard today that there were um, some, tr some tornadoes in Texas. And I know that um, I have some people who watch my videos and I watch their videos who are in Texas. I hope that you are safe. Um, back to the bad behavior of Americans. FYI, we're like that to each other too. So um, for example, and this has been really kind of like hard for me to talk about in a way that doesn't make me sound like that too. On the East Coast, we've had, there's been all that smoke from the Canadian wildfires, which is horrible and thoughts for the people in Canada. We know how horrible that is. And of course the news is like, this is so horrible. This is so horrible. And the West Coast, it's hard for me being a West Coaster to not say, yeah, I know, because we get that every year. Um, and worse than that, which is true. We have had far worse smoke situations and we get them regularly every year now. But that's not to say um, what's going on on the East Coast or has been going on the East Coast. I don't know if it's cleared up or not. Um, is not bad. And, you know, it is. It's just bad. We're all in a bad place. Um, I think that we as humanity have the power to reverse that. Um, I just don't think we as humanity have the unity to reverse that. So anyway, I just wanted to let people know that um, wherever you are, whatever you're facing, I hope that you take care of yourself and that you are safe. Um, and I hope that all is going as well as possible for you. And that if anyone is facing any of these situations that you are in my thoughts. Anyway, with that, I'm going to stop now because <laughs> I'm starting to get all... Uh, blubbering again. So <laughs> give this video a, a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.